Hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. This is a super exciting video because we're going to be going through a part of Lightroom that is so underused but so important to know how to do. So yeah, let's get into it. I didn't really know how this whole tool worked until very recently. I've just been kind of like playing around with the different sliders and as you can see, it does change the colors a little bit. It looks kind of cool when you move them, but I never really understood exactly how it worked. And to be honest, I just kind of ignored it, partly because it's at the bottom of all those tools that you can use and partly because I just didn't understand it. So I decided, you know, let's just leave it alone. But when I finally got to understand how it worked, it's such a game changer for how you edit your photos. Let's talk about the fundamentals first. It's important to fully understand how this tool works in order to actually implement it into your photos. So basically what this does is it changes all the red, green, and blue colors in your image. It's also important to know that everything you see on screen is made out of red, green, and blue pixels. So by changing one of these sliders, you're going to be affecting every pixel in your image, even if it's just a slider on one color, because no matter what color a specific part of the image is, it will have red, green, or blue pixels in it. For example, this blue in the color wheel isn't completely blue. If you check out the histogram, you can see that there are different proportions of red, green, and blue, which comes together to create this particular blue. So to continue explaining, for example, if I was to change the blue slider, it would affect every single color within the photo because each part of the photo has a small part of red, green, and blue within it. And that's the same for the red and green sliders too. This is very different from the HSL panel because the HSL sliders will only affect the visible colors that they correspond to, the colors that you can see on your screen. For example, the green slider will only affect green items in your frame and nothing else. So what does this really mean? Well, you know when people have those debates of which camera has the best colors, like, oh, these <laughs> Fuji colors are amazing, you know? Well, those colors are all different because Fuji renders their colors slightly differently from, say, Sony or Canon or Nikon and so on and so on. And basically, they've just chosen different values for what red, green, and blue is within their photo. So the color calibration is different for each camera. Okay, so how can we actually edit these? First, it is important to do this at the very start of the editing process before you've made any adjustments to your photo because it'll affect how your entire image looks and therefore how all the other settings in Lightroom affect your image as well. Let's see what this looks like on some actual photos. So let's hop back into Lightroom. So to start off, we're going to go to the basic corrections panel to camera profile. This used to be in the camera calibration part, but in 2017, it got moved up here. But essentially you're getting different options for how you want your colors to look and it's just changing how Lightroom is interpreting the shadows, highlights, the blacks, and the colors too. So choose a profile you like, and it's a good base to start off from. In this case, I really like how the portrait mode looks. So the lighting is nice, and the entire image looks really epic in my opinion, with the backlit sunlight coming through, but I don't really like how the sunlight and the sun, as well as the entire image really, is just looking a little bit yellow, almost greenish, so we're gonna have to fix that. So let's change some of the values in these sliders, starting with the blues. If I bring it towards the teals, you can already see how much that changes the image's color. We can go even further by changing the value of the greens, which I'll again bring more towards teal. You can also play with the saturation a little bit too, and it's completely subjective to what you like. And then finally, the red slider, I will bring it slightly away from the yellows, more towards the purples and violets, and now I really like the way the entire image is looking. Now you can go and use all the other tools to edit the rest of your photo with this new color base that you've created for yourself. One thing I am going to change in this photo, just to show the difference between HSL and calibration, and also to improve the photo too, is to bring down the saturation of the blues, just because it doesn't look very good on the side of the building, because it actually should be white instead of blue. But as you can see in HSL, it only affects the blues and not any other color. But then now let's move on to my favorite part of this whole tool, and that's creating your looks. And when you pair this with other tools in Lightroom, it's super powerful. So let's move on to another photo. One of the most popular looks at the moment is the teal and orange look, so in order to achieve that, color calibration becomes very useful. Let's again start with the blues. We can bring them down towards the teals and you'll already see a massive difference. I like to play with the saturation a little bit too, just for what fits well with your image. Then we adjusted the greens and brought it towards the teal, but this time just brought it down in saturation slightly. It's a personal choice and this whole thing is subjective, but in my opinion, just bringing those colors saturation down just gives it that little bit of finesse for me. And then lastly, we bring the reds more towards the orange side, which is where the teal and orange look gets completed. This slider also greatly affects the skin tones, so you can play around with that too. Cool, this is looking good. Now we just play around with all the sliders, find out what works well and what doesn't work well, until you have a look that you really like. And in this case, here's a nice teal and orange look that's created completely from color calibration. This is actually how I create the base for my presets. And then obviously you can go and fine tune the rest of the image too in other parts of Lightroom, like I mentioned before with that HSL color correction. And if you also wanna create your own presets from this as well, you can go to develop, then new preset, and you're good to go for a lot of your future photos. But will these settings work for every single photo? No, they won't, especially if you're using a different camera. But for the most part, if you shoot everything on one camera and you're just editing your own photos, 
you should be able to apply the same preset to a lot of your photos depending of course of the lighting conditions. But in my opinion, having that preset will always be a good place to start off from. So real quick, let's throw in another photo that has completely different colors and see if the preset still works. As you can see, this photo has a completely different look to it. It's predominantly red or orange, but I still get that teal and orange vibe from it because of the color calibration. But then I can go through and fine tune the various settings so it works better for this specific photo while still having that teal and orange vibe. For example, I think it definitely looks a little bit too red, especially in her skin tones. So I'll just bring down the saturation of the reds and play around with the sliders a little bit too to create the base I want. And boom, edit the rest of the settings in Lightroom and you're good to go. I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed it along the way. If you did, please leave a like, comment down below, let me know what you thought of this video and subscribe as well. And as always, I'll see you in next week's video. Yeah! 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 <laughs> yeah.